guys. Yeah, so for us, really, this is only the things we would do differently. Guys, why wouldn't you want to come to Thailand? Huh? Look at this. Awesome. Come visit. I stay to the end because there's my number one piece of advice um, on coming into the kingdom that you really need to do. We actually relocated and moved to Thailand, retired, nine years ago. And we built a house um, here in Thailand three and a bit years ago in a totally different place to where we first started off. So it's just really our take on it and a few little pointers that may help you um, along the way. And if there's anything else you want to know, leave a comment below and I'll um, endeavour to answer them. One is most probably when we left the UK, we actually sold everything that we had and we arrived in Thailand on Kotel in the Gulf of Thailand with two big dive bags and a backpack each and what we stood in that was it and that's quite liberating actually it's quite like freeing really realizing all what you got is what's sitting in front of you and um, that was a really good feeling to be honest with you um, but again in hindsight we most we had some nice furniture back in the UK and um, some of it wouldn't be would not appertain to living in a different climate but some of the stuff um, we would have brought over by a container it takes about six to eight weeks but we had six weeks when we arrived on Kotel we had six weeks to find most probably like storage and stuff like that so we would mo I'll try and put a link below if I can find the company that my friend used are quite reasonable and it's door to door and um, so some of the stuff like power tools, um, TVs and stuff, I oh, don't travel well really, I don't think. But say like power tools, some nice furniture that you want to keep, but remembering that you're living in a different climate. And so as I said actually, um, you know, if we were to have shipped our furniture over, it would have taken six weeks. So we had six weeks to find some storage when we lived, when we moved over first of all. And what we didn't know, what we do know now, is storage is quite cheap in Thailand. You know, a lock-up, maybe 2,000 baht a month, something like that. 1,000 baht a month, depending on the size, obviously. So again, what we learned was maybe we should have stored our furniture, got it shipped over, um, and um, found somewhere to store it. And then when we moved into our bungalow, well, you just get along and do what you got to do. So guys, um, a piece of advice that was given to us by a friend of mine in Kotel, he said to us, where you're living at the moment, in five years time, it may not be the place you want to live now. And literally, five years from when he said it, we decided to move to the mainland. And we rented in the, on the mainland here for five, six months while our place was being built. So all I would say to you is, get a rough idea where you think your piece of paradise in Thailand will be. A go rent for two or three months or something like that, and really find out the place where you want to settle down if you're only thinking of renting and not building that's cool you can then still move around but remember travel light things um, moving around Thailand is quite cheap I, if you've got a lot of furniture um, to move I think all of our furniture moved from Kotel to where we live now um, was about I think it was about 10,000 baht 15,000 baht which in the grand scheme of things and that's people we wrapped it and um, people come and moved everything like that back of a truck onto the ferry, off the ferry, driving to where we, uh, we where we rented. So yeah, so just take your time and make sure that you've found your piece of paradise. Hi guys, so this is about transport, I suppose. Now, if you are a motorcycle or scooter rider, then I would suggest before you buy one, um, I would suggest you rent some out and um, so you know which one suits you. And then if you like the one that you rent it out then you can buy it rather than buy something that you don't like um, also what I would say if you're not a motorcycle or scooter rider don't rent one out because it's albeit for us in the UK they drive on the same side of the road as us the driving and riding in Thailand is a totally different concept another thing while we're on the uh, subject of transport is uh, when you come over from the UK bring or any country really bring an IDL an international driving license this will make it easier you're allowed to drive on that license for a year because it lasts for a year with your normal driving license. However, if you want to tra get a Thai driving license, um, you should be able to transfer your English driving license as long as you've got one 
um, with the IDL for a tire driving license. And this is quite handy because it has your passport number on it and you can use it. Some places will take it, some places will take it for if you're booking into a hotel rather than giving your passport. Um, the first time I went to try and get a tire driving license, I never had an international driving license and it did cause some issues. Uh, not issues, it's just that I couldn't re meet the requirements. However, depending on what um, DLT, Department of Land Transport Office, you go to, um, some will give you it, some won't, because I couldn't get one in Koh Samui, but I got one in Chiang Mai. But what I would say is make sure you bring an IDL over with you. It avoids all the issues. So what we done, <clears throat> um, we got, uh, we went to... Um, the Thai um, consulate in the UK, and we got a non-O visa. Um, we had to show funds for that, obviously, because we wanted to extend it on the grounds of retirement once we were here. Um, so that's what we done. We come over on a non-O um, immigrant visa, and then we extended it on the grounds of retirement. On a non-O immigrant visa, you, the requirement for medical is not required it's an oa that you need a medical and the oa is the one you normally get into your own get in your own country so again i know i reiterate is but get a non non-immigrant o um, you have to show the funds and then you come over and then you um extend it on the grounds of retirement i would say though while we're here about that is we do have medical insurance, although it's not required for our visa extension, I would highly recommend that you get medical insurance. Here, and the transgressor, we moved to um, a very tourist part of Thailand, Koh Tao, which has quite a large expat community. Um, this helped us with the um, transition of moving to Thailand. Um, and then once we'd actually done a few road trips onto the mainland, we actually really liked it. And we decided that, um, we wanted to move to the mainland because a bit of advice that was given to us uh, when we first moved to Koh Tao was it may not be where you want to live in five years time um, as I said before so just remember that guys so finding your bit of paradise take your time and make sure it's where you want to live if you're renting then it doesn't really matter you can just move about considering where you want to live if you live in a tourist area that's going to reflect on your budget so obviously tourist areas are more expensive than the mainland or in rural areas of Thailand. So depending on where you go, depending on where you want to live, you need to check and make sure that your budget will cover it. Travelling in Thailand or wherever you may be. Um, we've actually seen this, these issues, but wherever you go in Thailand and you encounter a problem or an issue, remember, keep smiling. Be civil, think they're laughing, they're not laughing at you. What I found is that everywhere that we've been in Thailand, if there's a problem and you're polite and you're civil and you smile, the Thai people will always help you out. Always help you out. So that's a big one, guys. Civility costs you nothing. Smile, be happy, but explain the problem. Okay guys, so if this building route you decide to go down is find yourself a reputable builder. Um, if you go down to the local planning office, you may get um, some ideas from there. And if you find a couple of builders, go and check out their work. But most importantly is get a payment schedule, which is like you pay so much, you get the price for the build, and then you pay X amount of bark to get it out of the ground. Then once the roof's on, you pay another extra bark. Don't hand all your money over and expect it to miraculously be built um, with no issues. So payment plans. So schedule staggered payment plans. Um, we had a lot of help from our friends on this. And we are internally grateful to them. Um, because um, it made the process a lot easier and um, they helped us out immensely and I, I can never thank them enough I never thank them enough so if you do decide to go down that route um, try and find somebody that can help you you may have Thai friends um, that can help you explain what you want and what needs to be done okay guys so um, just another addition to the part of the building is um, I would I would recommend that you get the the, the building blessed normally what happens is um, once 
the build, before the building starts there is the blessing post and that is the first part of the build and the monks come along and they bless that post and they bless the land um, it is a very Thai thing it may not be for everybody but I would recommend it because where you're living and the builders involved in this as well when it happens um, you are like adhering to traditions in Thailand and it is a very very beautiful um, ceremony and if you check back on some of my very first ones you'll see that actually happening so another thing while we're on the subject of building is um, one thing you should remember is if you do get some plans drawn up they, there's never normally a lot of storage space so make sure that you um, put in some storage space um, for because you will accumulate stuff as you get a house um, our own personal preference we wish now we've got two bedrooms two bathrooms so our, our master bedroom has got an ensuite and the other one's a smaller bedroom but you've got a toilet and shower room which is accessible from the living area we wish most probably now we would have gone two bedroom two bathroom both with ensuite because it's normally just us, it's just then that gives that a little bit more privacy for somebody to stay. They haven't got to walk through the, the living area um, with a towel around them or a dressing gown or, you know, just to make them feel comfortable. But that's totally personal preference. Um, you build and design the place if you decide to go down that line the way you want to. With regards to the pool behind me, we chose uh, Des Joyo in Phuket. Um, we had uh, three quotes come in. And the biggest reason that we decided to go with them was because um, Paul from Des Joyo in Phuket uh, is a French company but he's perfect English we could communicate with them um, we I can message him about I use their products their chlorine and their pH um, and he can send them to me any issues with the pool I can actually talk to him and I can explain what I need now if you've got a Thai wife or a Thai husband then obviously that that issue wouldn't be a problem for you our Thai friends would help us out all the time um, but we just wanted to be that little bit more independent guys obviously and and what I would say is the photos of the stuff we see as you can see behind me in the previous video the filter unit is all in one there's no underground pipes it's a liner pool we prefer to go that our own personal preference but what I would say is check the the uh, they do they do um, supply a more of a streamlined version of what we got behind us because it does look a little bit like a toilet and we can always upgrade that later at a later stage if we want to um, so yeah that's just personal preference really um, but we're more than happy with the pool the um, the service we got from them was um, outstanding and um, they've done a good job of it so as I said at the beginning of the video this is my number one piece of advice that I could give you when you decide on relocating to Thailand. Down the route of getting a Nuno um, visa um, in, your, in your home country and then extending it on the grounds of retirement when you come to the kingdom, the first thing I would do is with your Nuno, go and, and open a bank account um, because the money needs to be in there uh, for two months um, for your first um, extension um, on the grounds of retirement so that's the first thing I would do hit hit the kingdom open up a bank account because remember without your visa nothing else matters you can't stay so that's the number one piece of advice I would give you hi right, guys well I hope you enjoyed the video that's uh, just our take on our own personal um, experiences on Thailand um, I'd like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers um, old and new, I've gained a few more subscribers now which is really awesome if you haven't subscribed then it's your first time here please consider subscribing to my channel give it a thumbs up and please hit the notification bell so you know when I produce a new video if you check out, if you are new to the channel, if you check out all my other videos there's lots of information on our day to day life here in Thailand and so again guys, um, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and most importantly, is stay safe